Stratus framework. Uh, today we'll cover uh, uh, Stratus framework and where it can be used and what uh, based on what it is designed for. Before going to start a Stratus framework, I want to give an example uh, basic structure for an application. If you see here. Uh, uh, whenever we are designing our application uh, if we have a, if we follow multi layered architecture uh, we'll have a presentation layer and controller layer business layer and a dao layer generally we'll see dao layer nothing but data access object where it will connect to database business layer uh, what actions needs to be performed and any business logic can be written it will be available in business layer as well as it will have a connectivity with dao layer and business layer will get uh, request or uh, response needs to be passed to controller so controller will be connected to, it is uh, uh, it will be connected to presentation layer where it will get actions from presentation layer and it will pass to business layer so basically previously before uh, studs uh, one t studs one what is the architecture we are following it is mvc model view controller so uh, now uh, uh, application is going to be bigger and it will have a uh, extra and where it uh, where we can handle the request from presentation to uh, business layer so that will be added to the controller so controller will be uh, be full control taken uh, whatever request and responses from uh, presentation and business layer and uh, if we go in detail, we'll see what can be uh, placed for uh, what layer. Uh, presentation layer, we know exactly presentation layer will be like HTML or CSS or VXTJS or anything can be uh, which we can uh, see. And controller will be like uh, nowadays if you see Spring MVC and uh, Struts also can be uh, uh, placed for controller and business layer. So everyone will try to use only uh, Spring IOC for business layer where we can write our Java cl classes and make objects more security and more efficient using singleton process which is developed in uh, Spring uh, uh, IOC and the next spring DAO uh, of course data access object will be handled nowadays we are using spring with hibernate or any ORM tool which supports DAO layer to connect a database so um, and uh, I think we are going to start with the stats why I am explaining this so I will tell you exactly the reason controller can be a best example as a developer I can say best example for controller is the struts 2 so what is struts 2 what is struts 1 so we will see the in detail what uh, exactly controller will do uh, uh, for uh, uh, as a struts 1 or struts 2 so basically we'll start with the struts framework apache struts is an open source web application framework for developing java e web uh, web applications and the main aim of the mvc architecture is to separate the business logic and application data from the presentation layer actually struts is defined for mvc architecture where we have a three layers to support and uh, and the goal of uh, Struts is to separate the model from the view. So whatever uh, model objects will be uh, that will be uh, separated from the view. So that is basically Struts framework is uh, uh, identifying. And Struts is categorized as a request based web application framework. So in Struts we have many versions but major changes in Struts 1 and Struts 2. As per my understanding standing about versions so basically what we think uh, versions changes means maybe some features can be added but uh, that code will not be changed uh, will think right but uh, if you see struts when mm, uh, comparing with struts to 
totally it's different and it is flexibility performance wise and user friendly also struts 2 comparing with struts 1 so we'll see how struts 2 can be as a controller and we'll see what is exactly difference between struts 1 and struts 2 so we know struts 1 requires action classes to extend an abstract base class obviously if if i write any classes right to support any framework i need to be extend something or i need to be write something for uh, to support that framework so as well as struts 1 is extends an abstract base class a common problem in struts 1 is programming to abstract classes instead of interfaces so in java we have a problem like we can extend only one class we cannot extend any other class so if i use struts 1 i don't have any chance to extend other uh, one more uh, classes so if i uh, all uh, so obviously i will think like uh, if something is there for example in thread how we have implements available all uh, obviously i will think for steps one also it should be good if i have something to implement interfaces but that is not possible with the struts one but that can be possible using struts two and even if we don't uh, uh, implement or uh, in, uh, extend also not required so struts to like looks like a one pure pojo but having one execute signature for that class so where it can be executed uh, from that class so struts to also pure op pure uh, pojo object but having with execute method and if we see second one, struts one actions are single runs and must be thread safe. Thread safe since there will be only one instances of a class to handle all requests for that action. But struts two actions are uh, objects are instantiated for each request. But struts one is not like that. So there, uh, if if we see uh, struts 2 there is no threat safety issues obviously because it is instantiating each and every object and uh, struts 1 actions uh, dependencies on servlet api because we have to pass the request and the responses to receive the press, uh, uh, from the business layer but struts 2 actions are not coupled to container most often the servlet contexts are represented represent Presented as simple maps and a major hurdle to testing struts one actions is that is that execute method exposes the servlet api but struts two actions can be tested very easily instantiating that action class and struts one uses action forms object to capture input but struts two is not like that just creating a properties whatever are um, we are passing from the ui that properties will be there in struts two using setters and Getters. so while using action class it will be the same property in names which will specify in UA that property names will be available in that struts class so automatically it will be set and uh, getter in next level 2 and struts 1 in integrates with the JSTL struts 2 can use JSTL but the framework also supports OGNL object graph notation language Struts1 uses the standard JSP mechanism to binding objects into the page context for access. Struts2 uses a value stack technology so that tag lips can access values without coupling your view to object type it is rendering. So struts1 action form properties are usually all strings but struts2 uses OGNL for type conversion. Struts1 support manual validation via a validate method on the action form. Struts2 support manual validation via the validate method and the xwork validation framework. So we have xwork validation framework also. And struts1 supports separate request processor for each module. Struts2 support creating different life cycles on per action basic via interceptors. So if you see 
each and every point how we have a special frameworks like if you think in steps two we have uh, for validation we have x x work validation and for properties we uh, uh, property conversion we have a ognl and uh, to support jsp mechanism uh, we have extra feature called value stack and it will support jstl as well as ognl we have many things each it can be um, uh, uh, it can be used by uh, user flexibility and if you see uh, one structure to basic example how easily it can be written how easily it can be accessed thank you